Named for the famed English explorer who first put it on the map, this Isle of Yore is separated from the rest of America by 12 miles of Chesapeake Bay and almost 350 years of history. Most of the several hundred souls who live here are so closely tied to their past that they still speak with the accents of their Cornish ancestors. I say you're older than the hills. I know it. Yeah. I'm old enough. I'm 60. I didn't think you were that old. Yeah, you're old enough. Old enough to know better and too young to resist, huh? <laughs> yeah. Environmentalist and author Tom Horton. It's a whole subset of, of people that don't really live like they do on the mainland and that have their own culture and language and, and values. And I think one of the most valuable lessons people could learn if, if they studied Smith Island is, is how people live this close together on this small place for so long without shooting each other up and getting into just devastating feuds because it's a pretty non-violent place for the most part. Most folks share a handful of names that go back to the 1600s. Names like Evans, Tyler, Bradshaw, Smith, and Marshall. The only way you can live together, you know, you got to get along. Live close together all your life. You got to, you got to solve your problems some way or another uh, between yourselves. All the more important because there are no police on Smith Island. There's no mayor or town council either, never has been. For everything from maintaining the streetlights to maintaining order, they rely on the Methodist church. When it comes to organized religion, the only game in town. A preacher converted the islanders back in the 19th century, and with the possible exception of that business about the evils of alcohol, they've stayed converted ever since. They respected the church's decision on uh, things that have to do with uh, keeping the peace among people. I mean, they, uh, they realize that's got to be. And so they uh, respect the church's decision on, on these problems, whatever they are. The Smith Islanders may not have a prayer of solving their biggest problem, erosion. The land is slowly but steadily disappearing. The population is eroding even faster. It is harder every day to make a living from the bay. And even if the crabs and oysters were still plentiful, the children no longer automatically follow in daddy's wake. Ferried to the mainland for school, they learn early on that there is life beyond the island. And once they are of age, many of them go off in search of new horizons. I've talked to people from the island who have moved to the mainland, and uh, although they often miss the island, they also say, boy, is it easy living on the mainland, being able to go and come and not worry about ferry schedules, not worry about storms. It's a place where, in some ways, they live in the past. And in most ways, they can only hope they have a future. The two reasons that it's a place writer Tom Horton calls an island out of time. So it's, uh, if it's not doomed, it certainly has a tenuous hold on things, I would say, you know.